Praise the Lord. You guys, we're getting ready to get into our Q&A. How many of you guys enjoyed that last week? Did you enjoy that Q&A? It's like, it's like a group counseling session with Pastor Marco. So let's welcome Pastor Marco as he comes on out. Yes. You guys ready? You guys ready? You could go ahead and have a seat. Love you. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. So, Lisa is not here today because she's in, in the LA campus babysitting <laughs> our new grandson, yeah. Zayden. She's got and, her and Gabriel and Abriana are actually teaching over there, so they need a little babysitter. Yes. So she's over there. She's a perfect babysitter. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to get into a Q&A right now. These are questions that are happening on the spot. They're not prepped. So it's going to be really exciting to hear the wisdom that pours out of our pasture. But before we do that, Pastor, we're in a wonderful season right now. Easter's right around the corner. Um, there's a lot happening here at the church. What do we have to look forward to? What's going on? Yeah, just talking about what's happening in this church in one week has just been really amazing. Uh, we got a team that's going right now to Kenya, 31, yeah. 31 missionaries from this church are going to Kenya. Right They're now. leaving right now. Right now. And as soon as they get off the plane, as soon as they get off the plane, they're not going to a hotel. They're, not, they're going straight into a public school wow. in Kenya speaking to 2,500 children. Wow. Wow. And they're going to be able to present the good news of Jesus Christ. It's going to be amazing. amazing. And so that's just, you know, this week what's happening here at the Way World Outreach. This week we also launched our Carson campus, which is L.A., yes. South, South L.A. South campus, LA. Uh -huh. uh, uh, on Thursday nights over there. Uh, there's a lot of great things happening. Uh, we might be getting a new campus for La Puente. Yes. The, so we're, yes. we put in an offer for another wow. church in San Bernardino. So who knows what's yes. going to happen, but we're in an exciting place. Yes, yes, there's a lot going on. Did you want to share anything about what's coming up with Easter? Easter, that's four weeks away. Can you believe that? Like four yeah. weeks away. Uh, I just think we, uh, there's a lot of people hurting. They're struggling out there. And, and Easter could pass everyone by. And this is what I've learned is most people would come if we invite them. Yeah. And what I want you to do is be intentional about this Easter, make it count. We're only gonna have a certain amount of them in our lifetime. And, and I want you to create like a wedding list and thinking, if I had a wedding, who would I invite? Make your wedding list, your invite list. And maybe this would be the Easter that some of your family are gonna encounter breakthrough, salvation, eternal life, because you invited them and it could save their marriage, it could save their children, it could save their future. They were an invite away. And what we're going to do is the goal is for us to put 10,000 people on our hearts and we're going to write their names in the foyer. We're going to have a place to write their names and then we're going to pray for them as a staff and as a church every single week. You're going to write their names physically on there and then we're going to pray for them as a staff and as a church and we're believing that Jesus, his Holy Spirit is going to touch them. How many believe that would happen yes. if we do some effort? So exciting. Uh, me and Christine have a question for you. Sure. How do you and Pastor Lisa handle conflict and disagreement in your marriage? Okay, when we're talking about conflict, uh, I think a lot of us get surprised when you finally run into, you're married, and you think you married Prince, Char Prince Charming and, and uh, Cinderella, <laughs> but then you find out, oh, this is not Prince Charming, <laughs> and this is not Cinderella, because when you run into conflict, and, and conflict is part of any relationship. It could be part of a marriage relationship, a father and, and children relationship, co-work relationship, neighbors, neighbors. It doesn't matter. If you don't know how to handle conflict, this is what's happened. You're always going to be upset and you're always going to be emotional. So handling conflict is really, really important. And when I, we handle conflict, it, it needs to be handled today. If you don't learn how to handle conflict today, um, you're probably not going to be equipped to handle it tomorrow. What I mean by that is any conflict that me and Lisa have, we don't wait a week from now, a month from now, two years from now to deal with it. Every time we have conflict, before we put our head on the pillow, we have to hash it out so we go to bed with peace. So if you don't fix it that day and mature enough to say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's talk about this. I know you're upset. I'm upset too. Let's talk about this. It's easier to talk about it and get it over with and solve it and then go to bed with some peace. And this is what happens. You don't wake up angry. You don't wake up upset. 
And this is what happens. If you don't deal with conflict daily, this is what happens. You become an angry person. And when you become an angry person, this is what I've seen, you start getting angry for everything. Right. And, and, and this is what will happen. Your spouse will just get on your nerves. Like, the way you're looking at me, I don't even like. And, and, and you say, why am I so upset and edgy? This is the reason. Ooh, you're upset and edgy because in the, instead of developing an attitude of forgiveness and love, you've now developed a habit of bitterness and anger. And wow. either you're growing more bitter or more loving, but you're not going to be both. Have you ever seen like a senior citizen like, that's mean? <laughs> Have you ever seen a grouchy cit senior citizen? Like, grandma, like you're so mean. <laughs> Right? There's a reason. She grew. She didn't know how to handle conflict. Instead of growing, instead of growing into a sweet grandma, she grew, grew into like a witch grandma. Like, wow. wow. But have you ever seen a grandma that's super kind and love? Like, you, you remind me of a grandma. Right? You know what that person has learned how to process conflict? And they learn how to forgive and overlook wrong. And they're just gentle and loving. You're going to grow bitter or you're going to grow sweet? You choose. That's so good, Pastor. Wow. Now, I remember you said you had a personal story. We've heard it several times, but for those people that haven't heard it yet, you actually had this experience when you were first married. Share a little bit about that where Pastor yeah, Lisa well, would not let you go to bed angry. Yeah, we, we, we had our first conflict when we first got married, and, and I was going to, like, like, just show Lisa, like, who's boss, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, like, make you feel the pain of what you did to me. And most of the time when you're angry, you're upset. And I, I, this is the reality. After you get upset, if you don't let it go, you don't even know why you're upset. But you're wow. still upset. Wow. The truth was, when we first had our first conflict, I can't tell you what it's about, but I remember the feelings. And this is what I was doing. You know you haven't forgiven someone when you're still trying to pay them back. That's good. That's good. And some of you guys have developed the habit of payback, but not the develop the habit of forgiving. This is good. You guys should be taking Silent notes. treatment stuff. Well, anyways, this is what I did. I was going to show her. So we had our conflict, and this is what I did. I took my covers, and I left the bed, and I put myself. We, we didn't have a full sofa because we were very, we're like, we just barely got married. We couldn't afford a full sofa, so we had a love seat. <laughs> so it's a half a sofa. And, and so, I, so I got my, my covers, and I laid down, and I was just so uncomfortable, and I'm going to show her. I got married to be in bed with her, and now all of a sudden I'm punishing her. I'm punishing myself, right? So I'm putting myself like, I'm going to show her. And the person that's mo most mature is the one that will seek peace. Now, understand, Lisa, I don't know what she did, but the idea was most likely it was nothing. And I was making a big thing out of nothing, and then I was overreacting. But the most mature person is the one that looks to make peace. Wow. So you know what Lisa did? She got her covers, and she snuggled in our little love seat. I'm like. <laughs> but deep down, I was like, I'm so glad she did that. <laughs> this is so much better. So we had a little discussion. I would, I would say five seconds, and, and then... And I said, Lisa, let's go back to bed together. We couldn't do that all night long. It was horrible. It, it, it was uncomfortable. But, but we learned from that night on that this is what we're going to do. We're just going to learn how to deal with stuff today. So, and we're not going to carry it into tomorrow. You don't end up in a divorce. It, this is how you end up. You just all overnight. It's process. It's, it's lack of processing in, uh, of, 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 of um, conflict daily that turns into this mountain hill. And the problem is, if you don't learn how to solve conflict, you could leave this marriage and go into another marriage. But if you don't learn how to solve conflict, you're going to run into conflict in your next marriage. Did you know that? Or did you think, this one won't have conflict. She's so much nicer. But the problem is, you're coming in with your bad habits of dealing with conflict. And when you have conflict, you're going to treat it exactly the same. You don't need to change your spouse. You need to change your behavior. That's wow. so good. That's so good. Pastor. I'm saying with a smile. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask, so what are some practical ways that you resolve the conflict? 
So one is forgiving right away, right? Not going to bed angry. What are some other practical ways that you resolve conflict, well, communication, I, I, anything like well, that? Well, the idea is when you, it's not being right or wrong. So you, well, the, the, the point of the matter is she's wrong. That's not the point of the matter. That's good. The point of the matter is to make peace. Amen. That's good. And be in agreement. Yeah. Yes. And get along. That's the point. Yes. So be, be careful that you win the argument that's called winning the battle and lose the war. I prove myself. You see, am I right? Well, I guess you're right, but I still don't like you. Yeah. So the idea is, a practical way is, is admitting your part. And you know, honey, I'm sorry for reacting the way I reacted to that, and I raised my voice, and, and that wasn't the best way to do with a conflict. Will you forgive me, baby? And then, you know what's a practical thing you say? Yes, I forgive you. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you say... This is what you're supposed to say. I forgive you. Just say it with me. I forgive you. I forgive you. And then you're done. Uh, even if it's not your fault, go make peace. Yeah, go make good. peace. But so, baby, I know we're fighting, but let's just, let's squash this so we can have some, a nice dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. Or would you rather have, keep your anger and, and ruin your meal, and you just spend $50 on your meal, and you're angry with each other and hate each other while you're eating it. Where's my, how's your steak? None of your business. <laughs> you should have thought about that before we came here. And you're cutting right through the paper plate and cut it. <laughs> the table's all scarred, right? So, so you ask for forgiveness, um, even if you didn't do it. So I'm sorry, yourself. baby. Yourself, Just yeah. um, take personal responsibility. I always say start with you instead of starting with them. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. That's so good. That's very good. And now we're going to go to the audience for some live Questions. We have Pastor Armando. Hey, Thomas. Good afternoon. Good morning. Hello, we got Rita and Thomas here. They've been married nine years. All right. Rita's going right. to ask a awesome. question. Hi. Um, so for couples that started off in the world, um, what would be the most vital piece of advice that you would give them when it comes to decision making now with God? What was that, decision maker? Yeah, what, what would be the most vital piece of information or advice you would give a couple that started off in the world? Um, what, would, what would your advice be for them okay. when it comes to decision uh, making? Just so you know, when she's talking about starting the world, is that there was no godly influence. Right. And when you don't have godly influence, this is what, what all you can live off is your personal experience or your opinions. And, and, and for some of us, our, our reference point are not great marriages, for a lot of us, it wasn't like you grew up in this great Brady Bunch family. Mm -hmm. uh, many of us grew up with broken families, anger, abuse, struggling, father wasn't there, and then you're saying, okay, let's get married and let's put this together. And this idea, we don't know how to put it together. Right. And, and then what happens, we'll just start medicating ourselves and, oh. and, and taking, drinking and partying, trying to escape the reality of our problems. And for some of us, it turns into adultery. Like you're looking for an escape and it's just, you're, you're killing yourself, um, trying to medicate yourself, right? So, so now we're talking about now when you're, when you're turning to God, you do have a reference manual. Amen. Yes. And, and, and the Bible, understand, is not just a historical book, it's an instruction manual. Say it with me. It's an instruction manual. Instruction manual. So it gives us, you know, what's cool about the Bible, it doesn't give us suggestions. It gives us black and white commands. And that means that, so when you start making decisions, I would just say this, don't try to just make decisions. I, I would say this, start studying the Bible, right? And then clearing up your thought process so you start discerning, get an agreement with that, and just start saying, we're ready to make this, this decision. Um, what does the Bible say about this? And it, could be, and it could be any decision, like we're ready to buy a house, right? And your husband says, I don't know. And you say, no, no, I really want to buy this house. So how would I approach that? This is how I would approach it. Don't make any decisions unless you're in agreement. Right. So get an agreement first, and then you make the decision. But, but even, no matter how bad you want it, it's not worth division in your marriage. Yeah. So that's just one principle that's there. Uh, and so making decisions, the better you begin to know the Bible, the instruction manual of life that gives you wisdom, 
um, the better decision making you both are going to make. So I would start from there. That's so good. Wow, great advice. Awesome, great thank advice. you. Now we're going to go to Ruben. He has another question for you. All right, we have Raylene and Felix here with the question. Um, my question is, when we started off our marriage, I would complain a lot, and I was what? used to it. I oh. would complain a lot. Oh, complain a lot, okay. And I was What'd you used say? To... You'll be what? No, it's good. <laughs> Um, and it's, you know, bad habits that I had got previously. Okay. So now that I'm working on undoing that habit, how do I bring up things without it seeming like a complaint? Okay, yeah. All right, good. How do I bring up things without, uh, without it becoming a complaint? Um, we're talking about framing, you're, you're like framing it properly. And, and say, well, and you know what we're talking about? Thinking before you talk. Like, when I'm ready to say something, I'm not, I, for some of us, I just want to say it. But it's not, it's, well, that's just the way I am. I'm frank. No, you're, you're probably careless. You're probably careless in the way you speak, and you just, well, just take it the way it is. If, it puts, if the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> that's not good communication. So that means that whatever you want to say, you know, let's say, um, I, I, would always, I would always start off with something positive. That's always a better way to do it. Um, well, let's say you're trying to fix the mess that he makes. I'm just giving an example with me, Lisa, because I used to make a lot of mess. And, but start off, you know, framing it and say, honey, um, you know, let, let's just say something positive. You know, honey, I know you work so hard. I'm so grateful for everything that you do. And... You know, I, 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 but I need your help. And I need your help because I got the, you know, the three kids in the house and, and you know, they're making a mess. And, and if we could work together on keeping this house clean, that would be awesome. You know, and right now, if we could work as a team keeping this house clean, that would be a great help. Can you help me with that? It's the same thing as saying, you're, all, you're a slob. <laughs> Why don't you clean up after yourself, I'm not your mother. And I, do you really think that you're actually going to get results and the husband going to say, that's what I was waiting for, for you to just compare me to my mother. <laughs> it's going to start an argument. I didn't tell you. Why you bring my mother into this? You're talking about my mom. It's, it turns into a radical mess. And it's all because your the Bible says be slow to speak and quick to listen. So that means you got to think before you talk. And if you're ready to complain, don't frame it as a complaint. And you have to learn how to frame those things because the goal, I, whole idea is you want him to receive what you're saying. And all I know, if I'm here and complaining, I resist it. How many, was that? How many understand that? I resist it. I'm like, I don't want to hear no more complaints. I hear enough complaints. But that's the way, best way to do it. Frame your question and start off with something positive and then say it. I would say it like a sandwich. You start off something positive, then you deal with the issue, then you end with something positive, and then you got your sandwich. It's a love sandwich. One more Last question, one. Pastor Marco, from yeah. Sonny and Liz. They're gonna be celebrating four years in May, so awesome. Four years, four years. awesome. What's your question for Pastor Marco this morning? Uh, so what my, our question is, is um, what are some things you guys did as a married couple to like constantly grow? And, like, as a man, like, what, what should I do as a man to grow my marriage? I think, I think first of all, um, everyone should set a, set a goal to grow, period. You should be a person that grows. Your career should grow. Um, your thinking should grow. You should grow emotionally. You should grow in knowledge. So, uh, just so put it this way, I, I grow. And I, and I grow in every area. So that means, first of all, that's a great question um, because you're asking how to grow. Well, the first idea is make a decision. I'm going to grow. Yeah. I'm going to grow in my part as a husband, right? So I'm going to learn how to be a better husband. She should grow in her role as a wife. How can I be a better wife according to, to, to Scripture? So, but this is the best way to have marriage growth is individual growth. To understand this, I, me and Lisa grow together, but I'm still responsible for my personal growth. And the more I grow, the more I can help my wife grow and my family grow. And so, so personal growth, you as a leader, is the most important thing that you could do. 
you should never, it should never get to this point that you as a leader don't know as much about the word and your role as a, as, a, as a leader than your wife does. So that means if you have a sharp wife, I'm telling you, I, I, if you have a Ferrari, it's going to take a lot of maintenance. You better become a good mechanic. <laughs> and some of you guys got a Ferrari wife. And some of you guys got a Toyota wife. <laughs> Hardly any maintenance. She's just easy. Right? I got a Ferrari, man. She has a lot of horsepower, but a lot of maintenance. But I tell you what, she has a lot of potential too. Come on, you understand that? So, so grow individually. Like, I have my private time with the Lord, and she has a private time with the Lord, and then we come together and overflow from our private time. So, so into good. each other, like, ooh, this is good, right? But if you come with nothing, you got nothing. Wow. So grow, grow spiritually. Grow in every way. And then just, and then what's awesome, tell your growth stories. And, and you as a leader, how you know you're growing is your wife is growing. Oh, that's good. You understand? That's She's so going to grow hanging around you. I'll tell you this. You start hanging around the leader, you're gonna, you can't help but grow hanging around the leader. Come on. You're, someone say, I'm a leader, guys. Come on, I'm a leader. And then she's leading the children and all the other things she's leading. So, awesome. Awesome. Are you guys ready to grow? Amen. Yeah? Okay, well, we um, have some opportunity for you to submit questions in your um, Marriage Challenge workbook. There's a QR code in that book. There's also one right behind me. We want to hear your questions. Some of you might not be asking the question because you're like, they're right here. I don't want to ask that, you know, but we want to hear all your questions. I will actually have a marriage panel on session four, March the 26th, where we'll hear from our pastors and our leaders on all the questions that are submitted online. So please take the time to do that. And we're so excited because we're about to hear session two lesson by Pastor Yesenia and Pastor Christian on Love Forgives. You guys ready to grow? You guys ready? Awesome. Awesome. Let's, Let's welcome, welcome them Pastor. Out. Christian and Yesenia. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to session number two of Marriage yes. Challenge. Who's ready to get this started today? Hello, hello. We're well, my name is excited. Christian. And, and I'm Yesenia. We're super excited to be here on week number two. We're yes. already on week number two. This is awesome. So we're going to begin today. We're going to jump right in. So I'd like to open us up in a word of prayer. Can you pray a similar? Yes. Lord, we thank you today, Father, for another service that we get to impart into our marriages, God, and our relationships, Lord. We pray that as we talk about the topic yes. of forgiveness, Lord, that you would soften each and every heart in this room. Yes. And that, Lord, you would just do surgery in our hearts today, yes. God, and help us overcome unforgiveness, God, and be able to forgive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, today, session two, we're introducing a very heavy topic called forgiveness. We touched on it last week, but I believe a topic as big as forgiveness, we need to reinforce and talk about multiple times. How many would agree with that? And the scary thing is, is that many of us have come to a place where we've entrapped ourselves in a prison called unforgiveness. And this has happened a lot of times when we've been hurt by somebody, when we've been offended, when someone has uh, let us down and betrayed us or even abandoned us or even hurt somebody that we love. We may be holding on to this unforgiveness, but we don't realize it's entrapped us in a prison that affects all of our relationships. But this is the good news. The good news is that God has made a way and given us a tool, not only that, given us a key to break out of this prison of unforgiveness. And he did that through Jesus Christ, the one who forg who's forgiven us of all of our sins and all of our wrongdoing. How many are thankful for that this morning? So we know this. Life is all about this word forgiveness. This is, this is a principle that we walk in throughout all of life. Forgiveness is not something that we can choose to be neutral in. It's either we decide and we make the choice, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We choose to forgive or we choose not to. But all of us have to come to a point where we need to forgive, and especially in our marriages and in our relationships. Why don't we open up to the first scripture and can you read that? And let's talk about Luke 17. Yes, verse four and five says, 
even if he sins against you seven times in a day and, come back, and comes back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. So even if, even if I sin against you, you got to forgive me seven times in a day? Right, seven times. That's what the word says. <laughs> <laughs> seven times. And it doesn't say you should. It doesn't say maybe under this stipulation. Wow. It wow. says you must forgive him. Then the apostle said, told the Lord, give us more faith. How many of you guys know we need faith in order to forgive, right? We need God to use us. We need God, God to intervene in order for us to forgive. That's right. And just understand this. This is something we're all learning here. Right. So we're all in school right now. And is that okay? We're in school and forgiveness is a, is a skill that we must all learn to grow in for all of our relationships. Right. So this isn't, a, this isn't a time to put anybody down or to condemn anybody in here, but, it, but this is a time for all of us to learn and to grow and to understand the power of forgiveness that God has given us. So let's jump right in, and we're gonna answer this question. The first question we're gonna answer is, what is forgiveness? And, it, and it's important that we answer this question. So let's take a look at it. What is forgiveness? The definition of forgiveness means to let go, to no longer seek payment or payback, to no longer discuss or keep records of wrong. It also means to bless. Good. How many of you guys know that sometimes that's the hard thing to do, yeah. is to bless someone that has offended you, that has hurt you, but what this is showing us is that it, it's, for, it's time for us to let it go yeah. and to bless them and no longer hold on to something that we're not meant to hold on to. That's right. You know, and this is especially true in marriages. Because in a marriage, it's really easy to get in this trap of keeping score. Yeah. We keep score against each other. It's like, well, you had three offenses against me. I only had two. I was good this week, you were bad this week. I mean, we can go back and forth nonstop. Right. It could be something, maybe we promise each other. I, I promise, you know, I'll, I'll do better and I'll improve, I'll, I'll take out the trash. And the trash is piling up. Well, come on, somebody. Or it could be, you know, I'll, use, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to, to let, let's, let's spend more time together. And I continue to let her down, and we're not spending time together. I, I mean, it's constantly, it's nonstop. It's happening over and over. But this is, to practice forgiveness is a necessary tool for a healthy marriage. This isn't, this isn't just a, um, you know, something for, other couples to go through. Every healthy marriage yeah. must practice forgiveness. Right. And there's something that I want to add to that. It doesn't mean that it has to be as severe as, you know, like adultery or something like that. That is a, a form of forgiveness, but it can start off something as so small mm. as a small dis disagreement mm. or a small, like we're, we're going to share a story. I don't know if you want to share yeah. it or you want me to share it? That's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll share I'll, it. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Just <laughs> he knows. We talked about it before. <laughs> but um, we, so when we're, we're two years and five months married, just so you guys know. Yes, we're in the Come newlyweds. On, <laughs> we're considered newlyweds. And so when we first got married, um, we, we're, we're so advocates of Marriage Challenge because we applied everything that we learned. And there was actually a, a practice round that we had to learn how to communicate and talk about one of our first disagreements. We were buying furniture. How many of you guys know when you get married, you buy furniture, right? And so we were buying furniture at Home Goods, one of my favorite stores. She loves Home Goods. <laughs> I got to keep her away from Home Goods. Yeah, he does. Uh, but we were there, and um, there was this, like, beautiful credenza we both loved. But for some reason, I was, like, on the fence about it. And he was like, what should we do? Should we buy it? And I was like, mm, it's a great deal, but I don't know about right now. Like, I just didn't feel like it was the time. So then he goes, and he's, he's really close with his mom and his sister. So he FaceTimes them. Hey, look at this deal that we found. Should we do it? They're like, yeah, do it, do it. And then he's like, all right, let's do it. And I'm over here like... What about what I just said? Like you just totally dismiss. And so like me going into marriage, I, I had this, you know, personality where if I get hurt or offended, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna be quiet about it. Not gonna bring it up. But in Marriage Challenge the year before that, we talked about communication and we're gonna right. talk about it next week. And so one of the statements that we learned that I had to apply in that moment was, okay, I have to bring this up. Like this is a fence that's here 
And right. I either have a choice to bring it up and face that, or I can choose to hold it in, and then it's going to lead into deeper unforgiveness down the road, right? So what did, what did I do? Or what, so this, how did that... How did you th handled that so well, and I, I, I felt like I failed that test, but um, <laughs> you may have been there too. Um, and so if you've been there, I, I'm learning. So, <laughs> but, learning but, we, but we learned that in that moment, it, it's what's most important, and I love the question that uh, we asked earlier about being in, in agreement. Right. What's most important than a, a being in agreement with everyone else is being in agreement with each other right. above everything. And that's the strongest form of unity we can have on this earth is with our spouse. Right. And so I'm not thinking that. I'm like, this is great. It's a deal. Boom. Well, I just need, I need more input. So what we did, we're in the right home, and it's quiet. So you know something's up. <laughs> Normally it's like, oh, let's do this. Where are we going to eat? Blah, 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 blah. So I'm in the car. I'm like, what do you oh, want to so, listen to? So oh, we, bought, music. we actually bought it, actually. So oh, yeah, we, we bought it. I forgot it, to mention we that. We go into the, to the car. And we and have it. And now I'm quiet. It's in our living room right now. <laughs> it's, it's nice. I love it now. <laughs> she loves it now. But uh, uh, so we bought the thing. I'm like, oh, excited. We're driving. like, hey. And I'm like, um, I'm just like quiet. Like, you know how it is, the silent seat. treatment. I was getting the silent treatment. <laughs> Which is wrong. I but she, have done but that. she, but, it, but this is why I'm so proud of my wife. Um, she mustered up the courage to communicate it. Because sometimes as a man, you, you're trying to read a mind and you don't realize what's going on in the mind. Right. Come on, man, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, I didn't, I didn't see that. But, but I just, I, I commend you so much for doing that. She spoke up and she said, I felt this way when this happened. But this is important, the way she even said that, I felt this way when this happened. Yeah. Rather than you always do this, or you're always doing that, or you never pay attention to me. She was just being vulnerable and honest and said, this is how I felt when this happened. What am I gonna do in that moment? I can't come back and say, well, well you shouldn't feel that way. She's being vulnerable, she's being uh, in that moment, and it, what, did it, what did I do in that moment? I asked for forgiveness. Yeah. And she forgave me. I did. I did. And we love that credenza. And we but, do. But, and I had a choice in that moment to hold on to a small offense. And sometimes it takes just that small thing so that good. they did or Come they on. didn't do that makes you turn into bitterness. Right. It turns into resentment later. And then we get into that mentality right. of they always, you know, disregard my feelings right. or what I say. I could have easily gotten into that, but instead I, choo I chose to humble myself and say, hey, this is how I felt. Yeah. And, but it was a two-way thing. When it comes to forgiveness, I mean, he, he asked, I asked for forgiveness, or he asked for forgiveness, and I said, yes. yes. You know, and, that's, and that was, you know, how that ended. That's so, so good. That's so good. And so what we're going to do right now, I want to take us all into the doctor's office. And we're gonna do a little diagnosis. And we're gonna ask ourselves and check to see if we're dealing with some of the symptoms of unforgiveness. So, Dr. Yersenia, yes. what are some of the symptoms of unforgiveness and am I dealing with that? What, what are some of the things that I can look for, the signs? All right, so sign number one is making everything into an argument. How many of Ooh. you guys have been there before? Everything you know, is just wrong. Everything that they do, and specifically we're talking about married couples, right? Everything that they do, you're like, what did you bring up last service? You're like, man, there's a, this dish is dirty. Like, why is it dirty? You can't even wash dishes right. <laughs> right. She's washing the dishes, but I'm complaining about how the dishes are washed. Or, right. um, you know, I'm coming home and I'm tired. I want to sit down. And you always want to sit down. There's right. always something to, to argue make, about. Yeah, to make an argument for. And it, it could be a viable argument, but that's, that's indication number one. Number two that offense is always in your conversations. Mm. So that doesn't mean that you know, you're saying, hey, I'm offended here, I'm offended there, but you're always bringing something up from the past. Right. You're always bringing up what they did. You're always holding records of what the wrong that they did. Yes. And you're bringing, you're bringing people into your offense. And this, is, this is what we do. We, we, call it in the, in, uh, we call it venting. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I just need a vent. I just need to get this off my chest. <sighs> Let me tell you about what happened. But really what we're doing, we're not venting, we're slandering. Right. And what we don't want to do, and this is, we got to be very careful, is that we start to slander the, na the name and the, the reputation of our spouse right. to people that, uh, and, and now they're getting all up in our business. And you know what's even worse? 
is going to our parents and slandering our spouse's name. Right. Well. well. So this is just a sign. We're in the doctor's office, guys. We're all in the doctor's office. We're just checking symptoms here. You know what another right. thing we do as Christians? And I just got to say this. As Christians, sometimes we call it prayer. Right. Girl, we need to pray because my husband is this and my husband can't get it right and he's this. Yeah, girl, he is, man. He's good for nothing. He's that. Boo, 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 boo. Let's pray. It's like, okay, God's like, you need a really? need prayer partner if that's the case. <laughs> God's like, you call that a prayer? <laughs> so we got to be very careful. So that's right. a sign. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. What's the next one? Another one is thinking of ways to take revenge or payback. So when it comes to unforgiveness, sometimes we want them to feel what we felt. Ooh. And we're thinking about ways that, okay, I'm just going to shut him out. Okay, I'm just going to, you know, wait. And, you know, he, he didn't text me back for a, a whole day. I'm not going to text him back for a whole week. You Whoa. know, like we all, <laughs> uh, we text each other all the time. But, you know, we think of these ways and that's a symptom of unforgiveness. Right. Another one is not wanting to be around your spouse. Again, this could be them, just anything that they do that bothers you, them breathing, them sitting there drinking soda, eating, just smiling. You're like, why are you here on my couch, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes we have to evaluate, okay, there's maybe some unforgiveness right. or bitterness or something that they did this week that I have to bring up. Right. And another one, uh, constantly blaming them for the wrong that they do. How many of you guys know that when we marry somebody, we're not marrying someone that's perfect that, that has a perfect track record because God knows that we're not perfect. Right. So when we go into a, a, a marriage and a relationship, we have to know that there's going to be faults. Right. There's going to be things that they do wrong. There's going to be times that they let you down. Right. But we can't hold records of those things because we're the same, we're the same way. It's, right. it's, it's a two-way street. It's true. And in a marriage, you're either operating in love or you're operating under unforgiveness. Right. And it's like oil and water. These two things do not blend or mix. Right. I can't be growing in love with my spouse if I'm, if I'm harboring unforgiveness in my heart against her. Right. And when we harbor unforgiveness, know this, it doesn't just sit there and stay the same size. Right. It is a weed that grows and grows and grows and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger, which is why it's so important. Like the story we said, it could have been easy for her to just let that go, not talk about it. But on the car ride home, she dealt with it then because that little seed of offense could have grown to a major right. root of bitterness and unforgiveness in right. our relationship. So we got to deal with right. it right away. Right. And I think, I don't know if you said this earlier, but unforgiveness is like a spiritual cancer. Ooh. And you know, cancer, it can start off something small and then it spreads through the whole body. It right. can spread fast. It can spread rapidly. And so unforgiveness, just any one of these signs, just something so small can lead to bitterness. It could lead into a lifetime of resentment, a lifetime of hate, a lifetime of just misery. And that's what we're here to diagnose today. How many yes. of you guys know that we don't want to be diagnosed with those things? Yeah. We don't want to live by, by those, um, those symptoms. Yeah, that's right. There's this great quote that says, every great marriage is made up of two great forgivers. Yeah. Every great marriage is made up of two great forgivers. Yeah. I think sometimes we, we put these wonderful marriages on a pedestal and in our minds we think, man, that marriage is so great because they don't have the same kind of problems we do. They don't have to forgive each other for the same kinds of things we do. Yeah. Well, that's not true. A great marriage consists of two people willing to love and forgive one another. But not just being willing to forgive each other, but also willing to even predetermine that I will have grace for you. Right. I, will, I will make allowance for your faults. Yeah. And I, as you do mine, I, 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 I'm willing to forgive you even before you've made an offense towards me. Right. Because that's what Jesus did for us. And I thank God that Jesus didn't make us try and buy our forgiveness from him which we do to each other a lot of the times. Right. So why don't we talk about that? Let's talk about what it, we talked about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness, um, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. We talked about what forgiveness is defined as, but now let's talk about these two things. What forgiveness is 
and what forgiveness is not. What forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not. Let's go to what forgiveness is. So we talked, we covered this last week with Pastor Marco briefly, but forgiveness is a choice. Good. Forgiveness is not based on our emotions. Right. It's not based on our feelings. If we wait to feel like forgiving, you're never going to forgive. Wow. If you wait for your feelings to catch up to you in order to forgive somebody that's hurt you, you're never going to feel that way, which is why we have to understand that forgiveness is not based on our emotions. That's right. And it's, it's what it really is, it's an act of obedience That's to right. what Jesus wants us to do. He calls us to be like him. He calls us to forgive. That's Jesus' nature. I would even say this is if you, are, if you consider yourself a child of God, then we have to reflect Christ's character, which is living a forgiving life, which is, being, which is being graceful, which is being merciful, even when people don't deserve it, because that is how people experience Jesus through you. Yes. Come on, girl, you're preaching. <laughs> I'm up here taking notes. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. Get rid of it as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. You know what this scripture is saying? It's time for us to get rid of all the trash. I wonder if spiritually we put on spiritual goggles, how many of us are hoarding this kind of trash in our homes? and in our marriages. The scary thing is a lot of us have become so comfortable living with the trash in our homes. God is saying it's time to get rid of all the trash. It reminds me of this picture of, a, of, have you ever seen hoarders? This is like our house, our spiritual home. We have bitterness in that pile. We have rage in that pile. We have resentment and grudges in that pile. In that pile is all the trash, and we've learned just to cope with it and live with it. Imagine trying to walk up those stairs. Imagine trying to live in that home. But what's crazy, spiritually speaking, we're living that way. Right. When we choose not to forgive, God's saying, let's get rid of the trash and let's clean it up. Let's get this, let's get a new look in our house. Let's allow the beauty of what God has created your marriage to be, let's allow that to show and to shine. Let's right. get rid of the trash. Someone That's say, get good. rid of the trash. Get rid of the trash. That's so good. And I think that it's important to understand that that trash can come before you're married. You know, that oh. unforgiveness can happen before you're married. And then if you don't deal with it, then it's going to carry into your marriage and your relationship. And so before um, I married Christian, well, long before, when I was growing up, my par I grew up in a divorced home. And so that affected me as a, as, a, as a little girl because I felt rejected from my father. I felt, you know, it, led, it was a small thing that led to unforgiveness. It led to just feeling resentment. Just, I, I've dealt with so much anger growing up. You wouldn't think now, but I dealt with so much anger. And it came from the root of unforgiveness. And I remember growing up, I had this, like, fear of dating and fear of, like, being in a relationship because I was like, that's just going to, it's going to be like that. You know, I'm just going to get hurt. I'm just going to, I'm just going to get, you know, someone's going to leave me. But there was a day that I had to forgive my dad. And I remember it was so hard, but the, the, re, the way that I did it was, I remember so clearly it was during a service. I just felt this revelation of Jesus saying, that is my son too. And I remember when, when I understood like the grace that God had for my dad, I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry that I'm, I'm building up this anger and this resentment towards somebody that you call your child as well. And so when Jesus showed me that revelation, I was able to forgive my dad, not because he earned it, not because he all of a sudden he became a dad, a, a father figure in my life, but because Jesus did that for me, right. Jesus did that for him, and I was able to do that. And now I didn't have to, I didn't I, when going into a, a marriage and a relationship, I didn't have to fear my husband leaving. I didn't bring that junk and that baggage, that bitterness, that anger, all of that stuff because Jesus set me free. So I really think that we can bring in that baggage if you don't deal with it today. Come on. <laughs> this girl's preaching up here. I'm going to go take a seat. Let's, 
So that reminds me, uh, this leads to our next point. We know that forgiveness is a choice, yeah. but what is forgiveness? What, 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 what was hard to say? What, what is it not? What is it not? What is it not? Forgiveness is not fair. Yeah. Forgiveness is not fair. This is, this is why it's so important for us to understand this point. Yeah. Because what we're doing when we're forgiving somebody, we're actually, it's like we're letting someone off the hook for, some, for something that they did, and, and, but also they did nothing to earn forgiveness. Right. Not only are we letting somebody off the hook, but we're blessing somebody that hurts us. Yeah. That doesn't sound fair. That doesn't sound fair that I should have to bless somebody that they've hurt me. They've stolen from me. Why should I have to bless them? They've, they've, they've abused, they've stolen years of my, of my childhood. Why, why would I have to bless and pray for them? This doesn't seem fair that I would have to let this go. Forgiveness, but here's the thing. Forgiveness wasn't fair when Jesus went to the cross for your sins. Right. That wasn't fair. Was it fair that God the Father had to send his one and only perfect son to pay for our debts? It wasn't fair. Right. And think about how many times we've offended or sinned against God. Yeah. And yet all of these sins, Jesus took on the cross upon himself. He didn't deserve it. Forgiveness isn't fair when God forgives us, and forgiveness isn't fair when we forgive others. But it is a godly thing to do. And it is the loving thing to do. And it is what God commands us to do, because this is exactly what God did for us. Can you read Psalms 103? Yes. Uh, it says, the Lord is merciful and loving, slow to become angry and full of constant love. He does not keep record, keep on rebuking, and he's not angry forever. Mm. He does not punish us as we deserve or repay us according to our sins and wrongs. How many of you guys are grateful that Jesus wasn't fair? Because we know just by one sin, we right. were disqualified from his love and his mercy, but he, he, he didn't care. He that's said, right. I'm not gonna be fair because I love you. That's right. Yeah. And that's, this can be defined as one word, that's grace. Grace. Grace is undeserved favor. It's something yeah. we don't deserve. But he's so loving, and so when we forgive our spouse, when we forgive somebody who's hurt and offended us, we're reflecting the love of Jesus to others. But when we choose not to forgive, and we choose to hold it against somebody, we're not reflecting God, but we're reflecting Satan. And we're reflecting the enemy's plan and the enemy's mission for this world and for us. You know, God commands us to forgive people that hurt us and he does this, and, but why would we do that even? Why would I forgive somebody that didn't earn it, that, didn't, that doesn't deserve it, that didn't ask for forgiveness? Why would I forgive someone like that? You may be thinking, this person, they still are treating me the same way, why would I forgive them? Maybe it's someone that's died and passed on that you're still holding on to some unforgiveness for. Why would I forgive them if they've already died and passed on? Well, here's why. Because when you forgive them, you get set free. Yeah. You, you begin to get and taste the freedom and the love and the peace and the joy that God has been intended for you to walk in. Right. When we forgive, it sets us free from the prison of unforgiveness. Right. So let's look at this. Here are three mindsets that stop us from forgiving? What are some mindsets that stop us from forgiving others? Well, number one, we don't, we believe that they don't deserve forgiveness until they earn it. And so we just learned right now that we didn't earn forgiveness with Jesus, right? In Romans 5, 8, it says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die while we were still sinners, yes. while we were still in our deepest, darkest sin, while we were refusing Jesus, that is the moment that Jesus came to die for yes. us. So he didn't wait until we got it all together. He didn't wait until we deserved it or we earned it. He did it for us at our lowest point. That's right. So when we're holding somebody accountable to the offense that they've called, caused us, we are working in the exact opposite way that Jesus treats us. Right. Now get this, Jesus forgives us before we earn it. And as a matter of fact, we can't earn it. 
as good as we can try and be, as, as, as angels that we can try and, and make ourselves, we cannot earn the forgiveness of God's love. It's freely given to us. But when we now start to go in our marriage and we start to keep score against the records that we have against each other, what we're doing is we are working the exact opposite way that Christ has worked and operated with us. So you know what that means? It's literally anti-Christ. When I'm condemning someone for the offense and making them earn it and making them uh, work for it, and before I forgive you, you gotta get right and you gotta earn my love and you gotta earn my, earn, earn my forgiveness, we're acting the opposite way that Jesus acted for us. It says in Luke 23, 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Jesus said with his own mouth, God, forgive them. Forgive them. In the middle of him being beaten, whipped, spat on, he's saying, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. This is a love of, this is the, this is the power of forgiveness that God is calling us to walk in. Right, and when we forgive, we are most like Christ. That's I know good. I said this earlier, but when we forgive, we're showing the world we don't respond like the world does. We don't, we don't do eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. No, we, we turn the other cheek, right? This is what the Bible teaches us to do, and we show God's love through our forgiveness and how we forgive. We represent Christ that way. That's right, that's right. Another mindset that, that keeps us from forgiving is we enjoy holding on to a grudge and we even enjoy even thinking about revenge. It's almost like we use those thoughts, like I would never do it, but I like to think about it. You ever been there? It's like, oh man, if I could just, oh man, I would just. Uh... And we think about ways that uh, we can get back, get back at somebody. It's like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. But this, this mentality is keeping us trapped. The Bible says in Romans 12, 19, dear friends, never take revenge. Right. Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. Right. You know what the scripture is basically saying? As long as we're fantasizing about revenge or, or trying to get revenge or trying to do the silent treatment or trying to hurt someone for hurting us, then we push God out of the situation. Right. So you can either leave it to God or you can leave God out of it. There's only one or two options. God, and, and I choose, and I believe today, we gotta choose to say, God, I wanna leave this to you. I wanna put it in your hands. I wanna give it to you, and I'm done trying to take my own revenge and make them pay for the hurt that they've caused me. Never take revenge. And I wanna add something to that. It's not in our notes, but when when you're married you're a team and the enemy will do anything he can to divide to bring division to bring disunity right. anything and including unforgiveness he right. will bring that into a marriage so that there can be division in the home and so when you realize hold on a second the enemy is trying to divide us he's trying to bring small offenses so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that we are unified right. that we are together fighting the enemy not fighting each other That's right Come on. The third mindset, and this is common, uh, keeps us from forgiving one another, is we fear the discomfort of revisiting past hurts. Yeah. We're afraid to go there and acknowledge that we've been hurt by something. Yeah. And I understand how heavy that could be, even thinking back to something that has hurt so much. Yeah. But that fear, that, that be, we, we need to understand this, the blessing and the breakthrough and the peace on the other side of forgiveness, it's worth it. It's worth it. I know it may be painful acknowledging what has hurt you, but it's worth it. It's worth acknowledging and letting it go. Let's, let's finally get to a point where we don't just stuff it to the side and let it grow and become a cancer. Let's deal with it. Let's get on the surgery table of God's, of God's love and let's deal with it once and for all. Right, who's with me today? And this will be the last thing we, the last things we want to say here. These are the, the, the benefits. What's the benefit of forgiving? Well, the first benefit is restoration of God's favor in our lives. 
What, is that, what does that even mean, God's favor? What does that mean? Well, there's a story in scripture of a man named Job. He had some really close people, some friends in his life. And when Job was at his lowest moment, his friends became extra critical, extra judgmental. They were kicking him while he was down. Has anyone ever been there? In the moment you needed someone the most, people were hurting you and abusing you. This happened to Job, and Job had to come to a point to forgive and to pray and let it all go. But this is what happened. When Job, Job 42.10 says, when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. That's so, that's great that God will restore what we've been, what the enemy tried to steal, God will restore. And not just emotionally, not just spiritually, but even physically. Right. There's a stat that you found. I want you to read that um, from John Hopkins. Yeah, this was an interesting stat because we think forgiveness is just, you know, more of the spiritual or mental side. But we learned here that studies showed that forgiveness can actually reap a huge reward in your health, lowering the risk of heart attack, improving cholesterol levels, sleep, reducing pain, blood pressure, levels of anxiety, depression, and stress. And so these are, these are like wow. secular stats. These aren't, you know, it's not a Christian stat of people, the people that are in the medical field know, knowing that unforgiveness can lead to just a whole, bunch, a whole list of, you know, health issues that we don't even want, but forgiveness can actually alleviate a lot of those things. That's amazing. So not just, it, it, we're talking about forgiveness here, it's important, but even doctors are saying forgive yeah. and you'll be healthier. Yeah. And God will restore even our health once we forgive. Right. That's a blessing. Yeah. Another benefit of forgiving is love begins to grow in our lives. Right. It says in Proverbs 17, nine, Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. Right. You know what that means? That when we forgive each other, really what we're doing is we're allowing love to grow in our relationship. Yeah. When we don't forgive each other, there's really, there's a love leak in our relationship. Yeah. There's a love leak in our marriage. Yeah. Love only prospers when we can learn to forgive some faults, right. to let some things go. Right. And what's the third uh, uh, benefit? We learn how to reconcile broken relationships and reconcile people to God. Second Corinthians 5.19 says, For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Yes. So God gave us this ministry to reconcile people to God. Again, unforgiveness, it divides us from God. It divides us from people. But yeah. God, God came and he sent his son to reconcile himself to us. And we talked about it earlier that we are grateful for that reconciliation, right? And God has passed down that ministry to you guys. Now we hold that baton to pass down that legacy yes. of forgiving others. And so... Come on, let's give it up, that's awesome. Our marriage, our relationships, people are watching. Yeah. And when we learn to forgive even each other, it leaves a greater impact, not just in our relationship, but even those that are watching us. Parents, yeah. your kids are watching. Right. Our kids are seeing. And if we can learn to forgive each other in a marriage, then we're, we're setting a better example for our children to follow. When we hold on to unforgiveness, we're setting an example and a cycle for our kids to follow that pattern of resentment, bitterness, divorce, broken relationships. Let's forgive and let's grow. This reminds me, I wanna share a video with you. This is a story of a young man who had to come to a point and make a decision and face his brother's killer. Someone murdered his own brother and, he, and if, in that situation, I can't imagine what that would feel like if my brother was murdered and, and I had to see the murderer face to face. What would I think? What would I say? I don't know, I've never been there, but I wanna show you an example of a young man who had to make this decision if he's willing to forgive his own brother's murderer or to hold on to unforgiveness. Take a look at this. I can speak for myself. I. I forgive you, and 
I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. I know that's, it's emotional to see that. It, it's, it's heavy to see. But just even think just that one decision that he had to make to forgive, how, how much power is in that? That even now there's, there's tears in the room, it's, it's, it's wrenching at our heart, why? Because because that's the love of Jesus, visible. This is just a real life example of somebody forgiving someone. And I know there's somebody that hurt you. I'm sure there's someone that maybe wasn't there for you. They could be here now, could be in your marriage. You could have to, there's something you're holding on to in your marriage that needs to be forgiven today. Today, I want to encourage you, let's let it go. In one moment, God can uproot whatever's been growing in your heart if you just give him permission to let it go. Right now in this moment, I want to ask you a question. If you have somebody in your life that you know, even just seeing that, you're thinking in your mind, there's somebody I need to forgive. If you can, if there's someone you're holding on to, even bitterness, or even now you're realizing it, would you do me a favor? Just raise your hand. You're saying, I know I need to forgive somebody. See hands going up all over the place. I see you guys. I see all you guys. I gotta forgive some. I gotta forgive my mom. I gotta forgive my dad. I forgot to give, I, I gotta forgive my spouse, the words they said, what they did to me for going out on me, I gotta forgive them. Can you do me a favor? If you raise your hand, can you, can you stand for me right now, right at your seat? Just stand for me for a moment. Just stand up. You're saying, I gotta forgive somebody. Just, you can just stand up right at your seat. Let's clap for those right now that are standing. This is big, this is huge. You're making a declaration today for those right now that are standing, you're saying this, I'm breaking out of this prison of unforgiveness that I've been in for way too long. I've been holding on to this, I've been hoarding it. I've been living with this, but I wanna let this go once and for all. Today's the day, today's the day to let it go once and for all. 
Could you do me one more favor if you're standing up, even in the back row, could you come down here? We're gonna pray with you. We have a whole team that's gonna pray with you and congratulate you. Let's all stand and give them a round of applause. If you're standing right now, you can grab your belongings, come on up to the front. We're gonna pray with you. We're gonna stand in the gap right now with you. We're coming in agreement in the name of Jesus. Come on church, let's clap for those that are making a decision today that I'm not gonna be trapped by the spirit of unforgiveness anymore. I wanna be free. I wanna be free. I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to let it go. Come on, let, come on, let's get excited for those that are coming forward right now. still coming forward we'll make one more call this is for those that are saying I need to receive forgiveness maybe you've been the offender in someone's life I know this we've all been an offender against God the Bible tells it and we know it to be true we've all sinned we've all missed the mark we didn't get it right Maybe you're saying today, I need to receive forgiveness from God, and I need to receive forgiveness from myself. I need to finally let this go. The Bible says that if you confess your sins to the Lord, He is faithful to forgive you. Today could be the day you say once and for all, I need to let this go. I know I need forgiveness of my sins, and I wanna give my life to Jesus totally and completely. I want to turn around from the way I've been living and I want to give everything to God. If that's you, would you do me a favor? When I count to three, just raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hand. You're saying, that's me. I need forgiveness. I see you guys. I see you guys. I see you back there. I see you. Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. I see you. Anybody else? I see you guys. Do me a favor. If you just raise your hand, can you join us up here at the front? And let's clap for those that are coming forward. Just join us up here at the front. We're gonna pray with you right now, and we wanna congratulate you. We wanna get excited right now and help you in your walk and your journey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do this. Right now, in this moment, we're gonna forgive the person that hurt us. I know it's hard, but we have to acknowledge the pain that they caused us. We have to acknowledge who it was. It's a first step. The only way we can truly be forgiven is if we really, we give it all to God. Not only that, but we gotta, we gotta repent from holding on to the unforgiveness. God didn't hold us against that, that standard, and we're gonna repent for holding other people to that standard. God has forgiven us, and that's the only reason we, for, we can forgive others. Then we're gonna verbally confess and we're gonna renounce every spirit of unforgiveness. And we're gonna pray right now. I want everyone to bow your heads. God's already touching people right now. God's already setting people free right now. That's okay, if you feel the Holy Spirit touching you, it's okay. If you feel God touching you, if you feel him touching your heart, that's his love. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive say their name say what you're forgiving them for it's okay it's okay I know it's hard Holy Spirit right now we thank you Lord thank you Holy Spirit you can just say it out loud Father forgive this person for this is what they did to me thank you Jesus thank you Jesus there it is that's freedom that's freedom Say this with me. Say, Lord, I surrender all my pain and all my wounds that were caused by the hurt. I ask you to heal my heart and my wounded emotions. Make me whole and fill my heart with your love. I forgive them for everything that they said and did to hurt me. I release them to you, Jesus, and I repent for holding on to unforgiveness and anger, bitterness. Lord, I renounce 
all roots of unforgiveness in my life. I cancel it in Jesus' name. I give up my right to seek revenge. And I ask you to give me a heart of compassion toward them. And I ask you to bless them and set them free as you have blessed me and set me free. I declare and receive my freedom in Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your freedom. Thank you, Lord. Altar workers, right now you can begin to pray. We need more altar workers. We need more leaders, pastors, DG leaders. We need you up here. We need you up here, leaders, pastors. Right now in this moment, in the name of Jesus, we come against every stronghold of unforgiveness now in the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to pray if you're up here at this altar. Right now, we let it go. We give it all to you, God. Set us free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As they're praying up here, I want to remind everybody that this is week two. We're picking up week three and week four. But to get the full experience, I want to encourage you to get the packet. We have daily homework, daily reading, and assignments that will help you to grow in your walk. You can get your packets in the foyer. I want to encourage you to get the full experience. Really learn how to grow. Scriptures you can read. Encouraging words you can have over each other. Let's do that together. If you need prayer, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. Don't forget Wednesday night, Pastor Marco's in a leadership series. You don't want to miss this Wednesday night. We love you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. If we have any more altar workers or leaders, we could use you up here, please. DG leaders, please, we could use you. Thank you.